Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we are reviewing a watch for you that I've had my eye on for quite some time and I'm really happy to have here in the studio for you all to share. This is of course from Boulder Supply Company. A little bit about the brand. They were based out of Singapore and Malaysia uh, and basically they manufacture watches and watch gear um, that's super tough, stylish, yet functional um, and always ready for adventure really. Um, now, as far as this type of watch goes, some key common characteristics and design language. Um, for this type of watch, I consider an everyday watch. Uh, really, what you're going to be looking for is a versatile blend of sporty and dressy attributes. Um, this definitely is more on the sporty side. Um, but I think it definitely can be an everyday piece, of course, more on the casual side for sure. Um, but I think uh, if you really, really had your heart set on it, you could try to dress it up. But I think it would be uh, a little bit of a waste because I think uh, the, the bold nature and attributes uh, of just the overall design and the fit and finish definitely uh, pay tribute to more of the sporty tool aesthetic. Now this particular model is the Boulder Expedition and this is in the Everest trim which would be the blue dial which of course is named after the world famous Mount Everest um, and it basically is there to symbolize you know, you conquering your own personal Everest. So just getting out there and seizing the day. So uh, with that said, a little bit uh, about the brand ethos and whatnot covered. Uh, also, I did want to mention that I'm reviewing it actually on the previous generation strap, which is available through Boulder. Um, because a lot of people had some complaints, uh, obviously, about the rubber strap. I actually found it to be super comfortable. Uh, but, you know, I think as far as like style wise it's it of course makes it even more of a casual wear uh you know this kind of brighter blue rubber strap for me at least um where i am in my life and in my daily uh kind of work uh attire um it's it's a little bit too casual for me but i think uh their original canvas strap actually has a great great look to it and um i even found an alternative strap which i will also be featuring later on in the video so with all that said let's go ahead and take a closer look okay so um as you can see looks really really quite outstanding on this original um canvas strap with of course the leather backing for me though uh before we jump too far into the review uh of course the the fitment is a bit limiting when it comes to these spaces uh as you know they're definitely for me the wear was a lot more comfortable on the rubber strap because they're obviously the holes are closer together so you could really dial it in so for me the rubber was actually super comfortable um and aesthetically uh, you know, I, I think pretty nice looking and whatnot, just a little bit too sporty for me, at least uh, to kind of be worn every day. But uh, a little bit about the strap, of course, this uh, has the kind of tire tread, um, obviously tank tread uh, motif on it, which is uh, very unique. Uh, I found the strap to be a little bit grippy. Uh, so that basically when I was putting it through the keepers here and uh, removing it, it, it was just a little bit sticky there. Uh, as you can see, it, it, it does want to grab, which is good for keeping it uh, planted on wrist and whatnot and keeping this uh, little extra tongue, uh, you know, uh, managed and whatnot. But it was something that I did notice, so I did want to mention that to you guys uh, as far as kind of removing it, taking on and off. So uh, these are great. You've seen tons of videos on them. Um, you know, uh, I think a lot of people had a lot of heavy critiques. For me, they worked really well, but just weren't aesthetically what I was looking for. So, oh, also a nice thing is that uh, I don't think anybody's no, uh, mentioned is that they actually come with these cool little, uh, basically a little field notes uh, book. And the nice thing is it actually tells you how to use your watch as a compass. So for those of you that were a little bit bummed that essentially the newer release didn't have uh, the kind of the, the compass style, um, you know, markings on the insert anymore. Uh, you can still use it as such. It's just not going to be printed there. Uh, so uh, works really well. As you can see there, uh, if you want to pause and you want to stop and learn, go ahead and feel free to do that. But I did want to share that with you guys uh, quickly on camera. Now uh, to the nitty gritty here. 
This actually retails for $5.99, which I think is a pretty uh, outstanding deal considering how capable this watch is and everything that it offers. And again, guys, I'm really, really digging it on this canvas strap. I mean, obviously the aesthetic. For me, the fitment, uh, it's, it's a little hit or miss, but I do have another option uh, that I will be showcasing later on in the video. But uh, a little bit about this piece here. Again, the retail is just under 600 bucks, and you know, as far as the dimensions go, it's 41 millimeters. Although it does read a bit larger, just because of the the particular design aesthetic is quite you know bold and chunky, overbuilt tool watch. But uh, I promise you guys, the scale is actually. Uh, much smaller uh, so although it might read large it actually has a much smaller dial and bezel uh, insert than the uh, previous model and you can actually see that by comparing it to here uh, which is the Seiko Alpinus it is not that much different in size and the Alpinus is you know regularly called a 38 millimeter watch which it's probably closer to a 38 and a half or a 39 um, it just depends on kind of where you're measuring from. But as you can see, the dial size is, mu is much smaller than probably you would expect. Um, and then, of course, the uh, rotating bezel inside uh, is also uh, smaller. So, of course, the case definitely has some large angular features to it, the big bezel and whatnot. Um, but when you look here, you can see that it's not really a particularly large watch. Uh, it, it actually is quite manageable. So something there I think is nice. It obviously has the, the big bold looks, but not necessarily the scale, uh, which I think is really nice. And of course, if you want a larger watch, this still is gonna give you that same look, but it's gonna be much more wearable for smaller wrists. Um, not that I have smaller wrists at seven and a quarter inches, but uh, just something to mention because that was something that even I had a little bit of reservations on once I saw the new uh, case design. I automatically assumed that it was going to be larger, um, but it actually, you know, I, I kind of would forget that it's listed as a 41. Um, but we'll get into quickly the other dimensions as well, which is a 14 millimeters thick with a 46 millimeter lug to lug there. So it's going to be quite compact on the wrist. Um, and then the nice thing is, of course, it's fully, uh, it's full stainless steel, and then it actually has protection from magnetic fields up to uh, 20,000 um, amperes per meter or 250 Gauss, which sure ain't bad, uh, especially considering, uh, you know, that it's, it has uh, this nice solid case back there uh, versus the previous uh, display case back. Um, now, as far as some of the other specs go, you're going to have that 60 minute bi directional inner rotating bezel. You have a really nice uh, sign screw down crown, and then you also do have another screw down crown uh, that manages the rotating bezel, uh, which has been, you know, pretty easy to use and pretty easy to line up and keep in place. It's nice because it does screw down. So if you're not using it, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, for me, uh, you know, with my Alpinist, uh, you know, any if something bumps it or whatnot and it moves down around that triangle throughout the day, it's quite annoying. Um, so it's nice that I can keep this locked in and basically only really use it when I need to. Um, so that's, that's definitely uh, really nice. Now, uh, the movement, uh, you can't see it, but inside it's uh, Salita SW200-1, uh, which is a nice uh, Swiss made movement, it works well, pretty standard, basically ETA um, equivalent there. Um, and then the case back is this really nice solid case back, which is embossed um, with basically, it almost looks uh, like a manhole cover, but really it, it's meant to be like a, a maze essentially, and then, you know, a footprint like you're taking a trek and, you, and you're working things out. Uh, kind of giving you a bit of a Tomb Raider vibe um, as far as going out for an adventure or an expedition. You can see also uh, it does have the specs uh, written around as well, which I think is a very nice touch. And uh, also a nice reminder, also um, what you'll notice is that there are multiple amount of finishes here. You'll see kind of a, <clears throat> a brighter blasting in the background with a high polish, and then you're going to get uh, the circular brushing all the way around, which is, uh, which I think is nice. Uh, it does definitely hits a great contrast compared to the front of the watch, which is uh, basically mostly matte finishes. 
Now, um, yeah, also did I mention the sapphire crystal? So of course it does have a sapphire crystal. Um, it has a very nice slight dome to it. It is double domed. Uh, so even at very harsh angles, there's gonna be very little distortion, which is great and keeps everything very readable. Uh, as you can see, and also does have an AR coating, which is great, um, especially on this blue dial because the blue hues and whatnot, as you can see when I try to get you to see the reflection on there, um, actually do blend in quite well with the blue dial. So it's it's actually going to read much clearer out in the open and whatnot when you're not um, under studio lighting situations. Now, uh, as far as the dial goes, you guys can see here that it's this beautiful matte blue. It has nice printed indices, painted hands. It has the date right at the four o'clock. Uh, also, where that um, crown is as well. The water resistance is 20 atmospheres or 200 meters. You do have a 20 millimeter lug width. Um, and then of course, I do have it featured here on this nice um, expedition strap from the previous Everest model, um, which is this gray canvas. But uh, to uh, one thing that I will mention that's a little bit different is that this is non-tapering, the rubber. So here you have a 20 millimeter uh, width on this buckle versus an 18 millimeter width on this buckle because there is actually a slight taper, which is nice um, and it's something I definitely typically prefer from a comfort standpoint, but because the lug width is only 20 millimeters, it's, you know, it's, it's not a huge deal breaker. But, um, you know what, I normally I'll cut away to get to the wrist shot, but what I'll do here is I will actually do put this on wrist so you guys can get a quick idea of um, how, you know, what I mean by that it's a little bit hit or miss on the fitment from a fitment standpoint because of how widely spread the um, basically each hole is. So as you can see here, this is going to wear a little bit tighter than I would like. Um, at that hole and then basically if I loosen it by one hole, but I mean I think it looks great and obviously if you have a smaller wrist or a slightly larger wrist um, This is going to work perfect for you, but basically if I now loosen it to the next hole down um, Now it's too loose right you can see right there. It's a little bit you know um, even without flexing or tucking anything away um, on here you can see that uh, it's a little tough with the uh, the gloves on, but <clears throat> you can see now it's just a little bit too loose. I'd probably end up wearing it like this, and then you know maybe chuck it up a little bit higher on my wrist where um, it's gonna wear a little bit more snug. Um, but you can see it wears really well. Um, really great sizing, quite bold, whatnot. But yeah, for me the strap. For me to get it really comfortable it was a little bit tough so i actually was able to find a really nice um, alternative which i'll show you guys here in a second okay so my pick for on wrist is you some of you might recognize is actually the barton silicone strap so really nice um great contours uh, it also has the quick release spring bars um and yeah i mean i did, actually didn't even reach out to barton i ended up pulling trigger on these on eBay, I'm not eBay, um, on Amazon to check them out because, you know, it's Amazon, it's super quick shipping and whatnot, I'm a Prime member, so I thought I would check it out. And I also uh, recently uh, started an Amazon storefront, so I'll actually list a link to these. Um, again, no affiliation with Barton, but hey, if you're watching this Barton Bands, uh, I'd love to check out more of your straps. Um, I think this one works really well and obviously there's tons of uh, positive reviews for these um, So I felt pretty confident that when I was gonna try this out that it was gonna work um, Really nice fitment there obviously really soft and supple the nice thing is there's actually a kink a bend built into it So actually when it comes around your wrist, you're not having to actually flex anything here You'll see a standard strap right where it's gonna be straight So when it's going to even though there's gonna be a bit of a taper right where it's a little bit thicker thicker up here than it is thinner down here so you get a little bit more flex essentially the thicker part of the strap is going to you know let's say that's the top of your wrist it's going to have to bend right there and basically you're you're it's bending and pushing against your wrist 
with this, it actually has the bend built in, which I think is really nice. Um, so it actually just wraps uh, quite nicely. So it just comes and tapers. It has a nice soft kind of turn there, bend around the wrist. So you can actually wear it probably a little bit tighter um, than you might normally wear it. Um, and it's going to still be quite flexible. Obviously, there's nice uh, amount of give in this strap you can see there it, it does have uh, some elasticity to it so really really nice and then obviously i think that it actually does play quite well with the look here um it does have a really nice texture there and this hasn't been a dust magnet for me that's normally one of my reservations about kind of silicone um straps and it's worked really really well and i think it looks really quite killer it'd be nice if they had you know a color combination that played a little bit uh, more with the dial, maybe if it was orange underneath or blue underneath or something like that, that would have been a really nice touch. Um, but here, uh, with the gray and then the black underneath, I think it still works, especially since the hands on there are actually um, painted uh, black at the bases anyway. So I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I think it wears really well, and especially on this particular strap. Uh, and also, a well, nice feature on this Barton band is that it does have this keeper here, basically, um, that it, it'll never move on you because it actually has a piece that sticks out that plugs into the end of the strap, which is really cool and unique and super smart uh, on their part. Um, and I'll actually even take it off for us there so you guys can get a, a better idea essentially when it's when it threads through here it is it's going to interlock in to that little piece there so it ends up sticking which is really great and then as you can see it does have the two-tone construction and then the uh, quick release spring bars which really make it a breeze when it comes to uh, taking it on and off and switching it out you know if I want to throw this on let's say like a Haviston uh, NATO or something like that instead I can do that pretty easily and that's all in and that was from behind the camera so it'll be even easier for you guys but this is what I meant about the uh, the curvature there as you can see uh, see how it basically has a curve built in there so that when it comes down on your wrist it's it's gonna sweep and grab around and then when it tightens you're not gonna basically have a straight piece that's gonna be trying to kink to tighten around your wrist it's actually gonna flow really quite well and of course just the general nature of how pliable this thing is uh, you can see uh, that you can probably tell it's gonna work quite comfortable and the two-tone uh, you know nature of it does add a little bit of dimension which I'm uh, digging very much so let's go ahead and uh, with all that said Let's definitely check out some low light transition and loom shots. Okay, let's go ahead and hit the lights. As you can see, super legible there. You can have that mixture of uh, some area being covered in BGW9, some in C3. So it's gonna glow really bright. It's gonna have great longevity and be instantly legible. Also with that two-tone effect, it does add some nice contrast. And you can even see down to um, you know the different scales there. You can see a bit of the 24 hour scale on the inner area is also uh, illuminated. And then you can see also, of course, the minute sections uh, every five minutes illuminated on that bezel insert, which is really, really great. So, uh, you know, from a tool watch perspective, of course, the loom game has to be strong. And it definitely is in the case of the Boulder Expedition. Now, uh, one thing also I'd like to add uh, into these reviews is a really nice little low light transition and what I do with the low light transition is it, it just helps you guys get a little bit of a better idea of what these watches are going to read like in real life because of course the studio lights are going to do a great job of kind of recreating direct sunlight but you're not always going to be in direct sunlight sometimes you're going to be in and out of office spaces in and out of your vehicle and whatnot so especially with kind of a matte blue dial and then uh, the way that finishing is, of course, you're, you're, it's gonna seem really like a super bright blue, uh, but in all actuality, it's, it's actually a nice deep navy, and it's a pure blue. There's not gonna be any real hints of purple or anything like that. So uh, it's really nice to kind of get that low light transition just to give you guys an idea. And normally, um, it also will kind of expose um, or highlight 
um, imperfections or quality level on the finish. Of course, this is a blasted finish, uh, so it's already quite consistent and whatnot. So it's not going to be something that's going to be super um, evident there. You're not going to get a lot of other hints by hitting it with the low light. But it does give you a nice idea of how that blue is going to read. And it's also going to give you a nice look at the the uh you know how legible this is going to be in between transition right so maybe you're just underneath an overhang and you're coming in from a sunny day you're still going to be able to read that watch quite legibly even in just some kind of like dimmer lights uh or shadows because one the uh the loom is very strong and two just the way that they have it laid out um, it's already high contrast, which is great. So it's high contrast in full lighting and also quite high contrast in low lighting, uh, even, um, you know, without necessarily relying on just the luminescent portion here, let's say, um, where you're going to have a little bit more light shining and the transition there, it's, it's just going to look really good. So, uh, let's go ahead and hit the lights and get to some of my closing thoughts. Now, on the wrist, it definitely feels like a purpose-built sports watch. Um, so while there is half, it, it also, you know, is clear that they care about wear ergonomics with that shorter lug to lug with. Um, as far as model variants go, you have two black um, case uh, options uh, and then also black dial options. I'm sorry, two black dial options. Um, and I think there is actually, you know what, they might even be two black case options. Two black dial options uh, basically one with high contrast one with lower contrasting um, and then there's also uh, you of course three different steel finishes you got the blue you got the black dial and then you're also going to have the white dial black bezel um, so there's quite a few different options there um, for you this is definitely my pick i think it's great quite versatile if i couldn't get my hands on this one i would say the black dial uh, model with the green strap uh, is quite intriguing as well and I think could be super versatile maybe even more versatile than the blue but I think the blue is just a little bit more fun and it pops a little bit more and I do like the play of the matte blue um, playing off of this blasted case I think it looks really great um, and then you know of course the pop of orange I, I just think that's a really great color play combination there um, now as far as comparable models go uh, again I'd it's it's my I just recently reviewed my Archimedes Outdoor 41 which I love I think this is actually really comparable to that except of course it's a lot cheaper um, it doesn't have a bracelet option but I'm actually probably um, gonna get together a custom bracelet um, uh, basically it's it's a bracelet you can buy off the shelf but I'm gonna have it custom bead blasted to have a similar finish here and then I'll, I'll do a video of that if you guys are interested as well um, in the future but uh, for those of you that don't necessarily need a bracelet or you're not big bracelet people, that won't be an issue for you. Um, but, you know, of course, uh, the, even the outdoor that's offered on a leather strap is, is still much more expensive than this watch. Um, so it's it's tough to say that. But I think they're all in that kind of same everyday adventure, you know, the alpinist uh, type of uh, or Rolex Explorer, Omega Railmaster, kind of that fully loaded everyday adventure sports watch kind of category that I think is really blowing up right now um, and, and definitely nearing kind of the heights of popularity that you've seen usually reserved for uh, dive watches. So as, as a steel sports watch that can go anywhere and do it all, uh, this definitely uh, has some tough competition, but a lot of its competition is uh, much more expensive or much more derivative or maybe even both in some cases. Um, so so that's something to think about. Now, as far as the bottom line goes, I'd say this is a modern tool watch that really embodies the spirit of what an adventure watch should be. Um, it's just highly capable, highly specced, and just even looking at it, it you know, it, it walks the walk and it talks the talk. Uh, looking at it, you're going to think this thing is, t I mean, it to me, it's almost like an analog um, you know, and mechanical G-Shock or, or an imagining of what that could be, right? Um, I've always been kind of on the lookout for that. Of course, there's tons of analog G-Shocks out there, but I, I guess um, if there was a mechanical one, you would think, uh, I think before everybody was like, oh, the Inox would be really cool. Of course, first came out in quartz, very tough, shock resistant, um, and then they came out with an automatic model. Um, I think this actually, uh, it's probably a good comparable also, would be the Inox. Um, from Victorinox. So, yeah, I mean, this thing, 
I think Punch is way above its weight. It's really cool. Um, I dig the branding. It's new. It's fresh. Um, and I can see why there are so many positive reviews for this particular watch and brand um, all over YouTube. Uh, so, you know, my hat's off to Boulder Supply. And, um, you know, thanks, guys, for watching. I know this has been an extremely long video. Um, but, you know, uh, kind of talking about the different... Uh, straps and whatnot uh did did add a little bit of extra time there so thanks for hanging in and um you know if you like the video please do it like and if you haven't please subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys